So far, we have had a lot of ups and downs, and if you don't believe me, Childish, I have some evidence of those ups and downs <laughs> in the form of a collection of our good friend Claytano's facial expressions throughout the action. You guys don't get to th see this as gameplay goes down. And there it is. <laughs> just, oh, wait, nice. wait, wait, what's going on? Oh, oh. See, this is me. I'm just riveted. I just stare at Claytano the whole time. You can see my schnoz in the shot there. Ooh, look at that face. <laughs> Clay, are you picking? What are you? I don't know. What's wrong with you? The winces. I'm upset. He's feeling the pain. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> gut punch. I see the nostrils. God, I didn't land up. it. I didn't. Yeah, I gotta be careful of the, the facial expression. <laughs> I thought I was off camera. I gotta oh, make man. sure that I, uh, you know, I keep got, things. I gotta be tight. careful of the. Right there. There it is. I just like to keep myself right in your <laughs> shot. Oh, man. We are having way too much fun out here, and they call this work. I'll tell you what. It, it may be fun for us, and it may be fun most of the time for the guys that are here, but this is when it really comes down to business. It is time for the match that you two have been waiting for on this side of the bracket between T Dins 93 and Tiger. As you see, Uberino and Howie will, will be facing off in the next round. Uh, listen, everybody that we've talked to is like, listen, it, it, with Sin Booty out of the way in particular, Tiger is the man to beat. Sin Booty had the best shot. Here he is facing off. Can we call it a foregone conclusion? Is it even fair? Is there an any given Sunday element to it? How much RNG can t possibly come up with to beat a guy like Tiger? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. He brings a lot of slow sustainability to teams, so I, I really think he can try to mix it up here. All right, and there is t 93. My NBA name is t 93. I'm 24 years old, soon to be 25. I currently work in HR at an airline, and I'm from Appleton, Wisconsin. I play the game, I go to work, I come home, I work out for a little bit, eat, play the game, I go to bed. That's my life. I'm an amazing singer, as everyone knows, and I do karaoke on stream and everyone kind of gets a laugh out of it. Pokemon theme song. I want to be the very best, like no one ever was. To catch them is my real test, to train them is my cause. Okay, here we go. That better be in the video. <laughs> Rest assured, T-Dins, we did not disappoint you. His peak ranking in RTA, 33, although that is significantly better than the ranking I give him for karaoke. And he is going to be facing Tiger, the 29-year-old software developer from Harbin, China. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Xuan. Uh, my game name is Tiger. I'm, I'm 29 and uh, my hometown is China, but right now I'm living in Toronto. Uh, my job is software developer. My favorite hobby is fishing. Fishing is kind of the same as uh, uh, summoning in summoner's world. Before the fish comes out of the water, you don't know, you will never know what kind of fish. And uh, I mean, at the same as summoning. So when the lighting, you see, when you play the game, you see the lighting, you won't know which type of monster, a lot of unknown involved in this game in, and the fishing. This is the reason why I like fishing and the summoners were so much. And the bait that he's going to be dangling out there, will it be taken by T-Dins or not? And uh, before anybody gets confused, there looks like a Sin Booty pick is T-Dins avatar, is that right? Yep. I mean, What's you can't, that all about? Uh, can't deny that it's one of the greatest pictures of all time. So. <laughs> I think multiple players of the guild have actually accommodated that uh, new picture from some booty. Well, t is a guy who certainly likes to have a good time, but this is not his idea of fun, having to face a guy like Tiger, who is such a dominant adversary. What is it going to take to, to beat this man? His runes are ridiculous. I think t has just got to play his game. He knows what he's going to do. He's extremely, extremely He knows what strong. who's going to do? Tiger? He knows what t is going to do. Okay. t knows what he's going to do. He's going to play his game. And Tiger's got to be the one to execute to be able to finish it off. So pressure on Tiger, you think, Childish? It's his match to lose? Possibly here. But again, he is uh, just such an interesting player here with a ton of great monsters, great runes here. I think he's coming in pretty confident, and rightfully so, again, being the front runner into this competition. Even the best of fishermen sometimes head out on a boat and don't get a nibble, let alone a catch. So could this be that situation for Tiger as he's going to have to take care of business and get through T-Dins 93 if he is going to become the champion everyone expects him to be as the favorite. What do we, what do we think of the draft so far here, Childish? 
So far, so good. Tedens is definitely repping what he generally does. Uh, Tiger bringing in a very unique monster, Vivichel, the Dark Heart Magician. This is definitely one that probably won't make the uh, uh, the ban phase, but we'll have to wait and see what he locks down here with regards to the Varad. Um, this is going to be interesting. And is it the Fire Monkey King I spy there in uh, Tiger's box? That is Jingzei, the Wind Monkey King. The Wind Monkey King. This particular one is going to have a counterattack passive that's going to allow him to use his first skill and potentially stun. Of course, with Husa being on T-Dance team, he's probably not going to have too much of a chance to uh, take advantage of that because he has immunity. But again, Tiger has taken a look at that. T-Dance put the first pick on Husa. Now we got the Praha in there to be able to remove those beneficial effects so he can land those crucial stuns. I think Tiger has the... Slight advantage going into this right now. He's got a definite, definite game plan that he's looking for. He's going to be removing all the buffs off of Wusa. Wusa also moving first. It's going to proc right into the Varad third skill as we see here, which is going to lock down all three of those monsters. And then that huge skill coming in from the Dark Heart Magician, leaving it with no HP, does not care anything about the passive. But of course, we do see Tedens. Answering back. Yeah, he brings that just back. Soon. Bringing it right back to life. So, Tiger may be a little bit upset about that. Yeah, well, you know what, though? I think Tedens played a really a good part here, bringing in that just soon. He knows that Tiger has that Vivid Show and can reset or change the uh, hit points in the attack bar. So, if there was ever a unit that can get it done that's essentially almost free to play, just soon is the way to go, the Wind Sky Dancer. And that saved him right there. Definitely saved him right there. Unable to land a stun or a freeze on the chat soon as well, but working down that. Chow extremely well. Yeah, it looks like Wusa is now up to go. Of course, his main skill is down, so he's just going to use the second skill to provide a little bit of a heal um, and doing damage based on max HP. Uh, looks like Tiger is still trying to get down that Chow, and rightfully so with that defense break is in. He looks like he got a crucial stun. Still going to work it out. Uh, it looks like he can't get it done, but of course, we now have to wait and see what he decides to do with Praha. Do you go for it? I believe. He's got a, he's, oh. I would have I would said use the third skill, get rid of that attack. Uh, attack power buff from all f three monsters that still have it left and then potentially stun a few but he does get the third skill down from Varad now. Tiger able to freeze just two monsters this time. Still that Chasun is resisting everything that Varad is throwing at it. And take note he is actually not working on uh, Chow now he's actually trying to lock down that like a like being one of the units that if you leave in the late game It could do a ton of damage here. I like the choice considering uh, he's currently frozen. He can't counter attack Yeah, able to get it down now and the next monster he needs to work on of course is the Chow We talk about it all the time how there's one or two monsters that could potentially change the outcome of the match Chow is definitely the next one on the list and we will see him Nice getting a, a clutch stun right there that he needed uh-oh, we got that uh, main skill up. I think it's a Sword of Destiny, Unchanged Destiny here. Is he going to cast it? No, he's going to use his healing music, providing the immunity here. All right. I, well, got to gotta keep the units alive here. I figured with Praha sitting back on his heel, he probably would have just waited for that. But no, he went for the immunity. Uh, what do you think about that, Clay? I think he's trying to use that skill from the Dark Heart Magician onto Chasun instead. Yeah, good point. Save it, it for Chasun. Yeah. I like that choice, considering that essentially Tedians can counter that. He's paying really, really close attention to the attack bars, waiting for the perfect time to use his main skill. And notice Tidus responding to that, not using his third skill once again on, uh, on Chow to save him because he anticipates that particular play from Tiger. But he's able to get a violent proc from the Wind Monkey King, taking down the Chow, and this might be, this might be the end for this first game. Yeah, it looks like Tiger's trying to sit back here. He doesn't want to put any additional aggression. He wants to make sure that his units are healed up. But of course, Tiden sees it and just wants to go ahead and give up. Uh, game one goes to Tiger. Well, you did mention, Clay, that Tiger had the edge heading into things, executed flawlessly. And Tiden's now left to make the adjustments that will be necessary in order for him to hopefully take down this second game and avoid being swept by Tiger. Childish, I'm putting you in those shoes. What do you do? When it comes to Tiger, I get a choice. When it comes to Tiden's making the adaptation here that he needs to. You know, this is going to be interesting. Considering that he knows that uh, Tiger's going to be playing that Vivid Shell here, he's obviously going to have to incorporate the Jasoon. And with Tiden's strategy, generally running a lot of sustained type of units, a lot of tanky units here, I don't know if he can make the right choices. I know that he said prior to, uh, he had a limited amount of options, but he still had some pretty decent routes. But speed could be a factor here when it comes to Tiger. Tiger well known for the high quality, not just runes in it, with regards to effective HP, but more so speed. And uh, Tidens talking about Wusa being his favorite character, whereas Tiger's favorite character 
the dark harp. So Tiger actually taking away Wusa from Tedens in this situation now because he was able to grab the first pick this round. And Tiger's got a little bit, you know, it, it's not always easy when you have such a diverse monster box. He's got a huge, huge amount of, you know, vast options. And just playing them at the right time, it's not always the easiest thing to do. Good problem to have, though, obviously. Yeah. It's right. a good problem to have, but it, it, it makes you think a little bit more, and it, time can run out, and you just have to go with one shot that you, that you end up deciding that you, you have to go with it. But Tedens going with a very similar comp that he had last time, bringing a little bit more... Well, he, he missed the Wusa. He's missing out on Wusa now, so he does bring Belladuel instead, as we saw that mm -hmm. in a previous match between Howie and Frank as well. Tiger's Monster Box reminds me of the menu at Cheesecake Factory. There's just too many options! There you go. Yeah, but looks like he, uh, looks like Tidus went ahead and banned Molong. Molong and uh, Icarus here, a deadly combination if you allow them to get past the pick and ban pace, so I like that choice right there. It looks like uh, we have Hathor from Tiger is going to be able to go, but of course he works on uh, Veladrol getting the crucial sleep so that Veladrol cannot cleanse, and now we can do some work when it comes to the car control of Tiger. So here we go, the Icarus deciding not to use any skills. Veladrol getting a crucial violent proc, able to provide the immunity for his whole team for the next three turns, and down comes Justice. Able to get a violent proc. Wasn't able to do a huge amount of damage, of course, because of the shield from Wusa, but now working away between both the Chow and the Wind Monkey King on that Dark Heart Magician. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what uh, Tiger's going to be able to do right now. I mean, he literally needs to wait for that immunity to come out so he can take advantage of it. Of course, he still has Vivid Shell's main skill, but the attack bar to HP ratio on these units are not where he wants it to be. But despite that fact, he does use it. That's interesting. The Chasun was right after that. He, he I don't know if he uh, predicted that to be, but I probably would have held back on that considering that Chasun was ready to go right afterwards. Chasun definitely was ready to go. He may have just decided that he wanted to go for it, but... Definitely great catch there, Childish, and I think Tedens is, is sitting in a good position. He just needs to make sure that he doesn't get locked down by that Hathor. As soon as he gets locked down by that Hathor, it could change the game completely. He actually it goes for it, but may not have been the right decision to make with just having those two monsters without immunity. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see here. No, notice that he didn't even use the Sweet Dreams to remove the beneficial effects on Bellagio and possibly uh, lock him down as well. Like you said, he's he's making some orthodox uh, changes right now. But again, it is Tiger. Uh, if there's one person to mix it up today, that would be the one. It's hard to question a guy with the record that Tiger has and right. his successes. But certainly there are on the surface moments where it feels as though the evident play isn't the one that he employs, and could that possibly be leaving the door open for Tedens, or could he even be baiting Tedens into an approach that he's ready for? Who knows? Who knows? Well, what he's trying to do, I would assume, is he's trying to combo the Icarus with the Dark Heart Magician. He's Correct. trying to get those two together where they can one-two punch, basically, but he's just timed a little bit off, and Tedens is playing that perfectly with having the Chasun pick in there for his team, which is kind of completely removing the, the chance for Tiger to have that opportunity. Yeah, that was an interesting point that you just made right there, too. With regards to Molong, Molong, Icarus, and Vivichel, all three of them work synergistically to be able to do like a one-two shot combo there to take him out. So uh, I really like the strategy of Tiger, uh, Tiger coming into this uh, second game. But Tedin's playing it very, very well here, adjusting just tremendously between the last match and this one. So if he gets a... A, a nice violent proc or something here from the Chow, that could be the end of the, the Vivishell. And there down it goes, not even needing a violent proc, yep. able to take down Vivishell. And I would say that Tedens is potentially able to win this, this whole game right now. Looking really good here. That attack buff is not one to uh, question here. As the uh, stage gets later on in the game, the attack power is going to be going up as well as the HP going down. Combine that with the defense break from Xing Zhe or Chow's attack, or it's uh, Chasun's attack buff here, he could do a ton of damage. It looks like he was able to lock down Xing Zhe. Interesting situation. But Veladuel resisting the sleep there. Mm -hmm. yep. That's exactly what Tedens needed because now Hather does not have the, the control over the monsters that he was looking for previously. And it looks like Tedens, regardless of elemental advantage, is still going after the Hathor with Chao. He's got a sleep. I was assuming him going after the, the Veladuel, but he decides to land the attack break 
on the Chow. Chow able to remove the attack break with the Veljewel there, so not too much from the from the Hather in that situation. I don't know if, if Tiger's Tiger's making some interesting moves. I'm not sure if the nerves are getting to him, but well, down goes, goes the Hather. Yep. And that Absolutely. was the key monster in his remaining three. Yeah, I don't it's going to be a real uphill climb here if there's any chance whatsoever for Tiger to win. It certainly doesn't look like it. Right, yeah, considering the passives that both uh, Tita's main monsters bring, uh, Jing Zhe just yeah. providing a ton of sustainability, and of course Chow having that heal, I mean, there's nothing he much can do. And guys, don't look now, but Tiger is level. One match, one game apiece with Tita's, and if he doesn't pull it through here in game three, he's going to be out, and it could be anybody's tournament. Yep. Absolutely. I, I definitely agree with that uh, decision there because you go into this thinking that there's two main players. And if both of those two main players that you think are going to fight in the finals mm -hmm. get taken out the first turn or the first game, it's anyone's match. What was the crucial misstep there by Tiger that he's going to want to look to avoid on this occasion? And obviously we're apprehensive about saying things like Tiger's guilty of a misstep because he is as versed in the, in the game as he is. But... It certainly, it felt as though there was a couple of moments where both of you were like scratching your temple and going, I'm not sure I would have put the Hathor to work already in that spot. Or, you yeah. know, and, and that allowed T-Dins to, to play perfectly, obviously, which he needed to do in order to then regain the advantage and eventually cruise to victory there. There was a, a few points in the match that I, you know, like you said, kind of scratched my head. And obviously, he's a much higher rank than I am, so right. he might be thinking a different way than I would. But... For me, I, he needs to be looking at those attack bars a little bit more attentively because with the way that Vivishell works, he needs to make sure that he's not using it at a time where it's just wasting it because of Tiden's uh, Chastun that's just going to revive or, or heal up that monster right back to full health. Right. I mean, the results obviously speak for themselves as we see the crucial draft in the third game underway, Childish. And what stands out so far? Anything? Uh, with regards to Tiden's play, I mean, he pretty much is bringing the same standard composition. I'm curious to see if Tiger decides to uh, ban that just soon. It sounds kind of weird, but again, that Fallen Blossom that's going to essentially hard counter his Vivichel and then the attack buff that it's going to be bringing into the later stages of the game with his two main damage dealers, Chao and Shinsei, this could be pretty interesting. Yeah, Tiden's going with the exact same team there, but if he leaves in Amelia, that almost makes Hathor correct. kind of irrelevant. Correct, correct. So he's got to ban the Amelia. Yeah. And Tidens also goes with the same pick. He's banning out the Molong, but the only difference in this match between the last one is the Light Panda. Yeah. And we have not gotten a chance to see too much play from the Light Panda in, uh, in the entire World Championship so far. So it's going to be nice to see him a pull through today and see if he actually makes as big a difference as people think he's going to make. Yeah, Tian Lang, the Light Panda, is uh, unique, similar to the uh, Molong here, providing that AoE stun that you can see right there, three out of the four monsters, and then, of course, he has a passive that will uh, essentially give him uh, a certain amount of attack power after uh, Velajul goes ahead and uses his Sanctuary to increase his attack rate. Clay Tano's about to fall out of his chair over <laughs> here, Clay. What's going on? So, I'm just looking at Tidens right now because he had the luck. He was able to... You know, avoid the stun from the Tian Lang. And he was able to avoid the sleep from Hathor. And then it was just the, the sleep from the Vivashell that came in, or, or was it the Vivashell or the, the Wusa that was able to put the Veljewel to sleep? And it kind of just seals the nail in the coffin right now because Tiger's just going to be starting to cycle now with the Hathor having full reign of all of his monsters. And I don't know, I think. You know, he had some good luck in the, in the beginning, but <laughs> Tiger just had way too many uh, CC options to lock down that Veljo, and that may have decided the match right there in the first couple turns. Could Tidens have maybe considered banning the Hathor instead? I would say maybe, but uh, I think that wasn't there's, the key. there's too many options. Yeah, to yeah options. his build out at that point with the five monsters he had assured him of having something that was going to cause trouble. Right, and he also had the double immunity between Amelia and Veljewel, so he was kind of prepared for it. But he just had, he had some good luck and then he had some bad luck right after it. So, unfortunately for Tidens, this is not looking good. He's going to be able to, oh, I was thinking that Tiger was going to be able to land the sleep on Jingzhe, wasn't able to get it. It looks like Wusa is now going to try to work down that Jingze, uh, getting a couple hits. Nice additional proc here by Tian Lang. Uh, but he, instead of trying to go for Jingze, he tries to provide the defense break on Chao. Interesting pick, but again, uh, he has the advantage right now, four monsters to three. 
And nice. Able to take down Jingzhe with the Dark Harbinger. And of course, he decided to use the defense break on Chao because he knew that he wasn't going to be doing too much damage with the light panda there and able to cycle into the third skill. And that is it. Tiger it gave us a little bit of a scare there, but able to move on now. Taking out T Din's 93. Well, I think Tiger got a scare himself, childish, after T Din's leveled the, leveled the uh, match by winning the second game, but Tiger obviously recomposing himself. It is interesting, though. A couple of pieces of good luck for T Din's there. Were it not for Tiger, then finally, eventually breaking through, could have gone T Din's way yet again in that third game if he didn't land that sleep. Yeah, that was really the deciding the factor to it. I would. Love to hear Tiger's thoughts on, you know, that second game, though, between how he was picking, if that was the way he was wanting things to go, or if that was just mistakes and he wasn't thinking, maybe nerves would get into him a little bit. Well, Clay, you're in luck, because I've got somebody who's able to shed light, who's standing by with the man himself, our very own Pokemonstrous, Maria. <laughs> Tiger, what do you think was the key factor in the second game that unfortunately let Tedens back into the match? Uh, for the second day, uh, game, I was trying to try some new stuff I didn't and have never used it before. So, but the problem is Tidin's unit is very slow. So I, I, I'm not able to switch the, his attack bar and the, um, HP, HP bar. Yeah, I think that's the problem. Okay, well, good luck in the next round. We're looking forward to seeing you play again. Okay, thank you.